Hi, welcome to a very special pre-show of uh, Three Nerds in a Basement, directed to our long-lost friend he left yesterday, a Blavin Harold Ricafort Haramillo. It's a fucking long name, dude. Get a shorter name. Uh, we're just uh, we're just here to tell the audience tales of how we met Blavin, how what we think of Blavin, and what we think Blavin's gonna do in Japan or in the future. school through our mutual friend Christoph Soika. <laughs> Is that it? No, that no. It? You met him? I'm just thinking. My first impression of him was I, I used to think he was one of the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> I told him this and he's like, really? That's what you thought of me. He's like, yeah, I was afraid to talk to you. But then when I met him and we got talking, I was like, man, you're just a giant nerd. <laughs> I was completely wrong. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how we met. I remember I brought him home for lunch one day. <laughs> Late night. And he started talking to my parents and everybody in Tagalog. <laughs> they just instantly loved him because of that. And yeah, we've been friends since. Cool. I met, I met Blavin about, I guess, a year and a half ago. Or two years now. Yeah, two years uh, through our mutual friend Christian. Uh, the first time I met him was at one of Christian's like, like friend get together. I don't know if it was like I forget if it was like a birthday or something. But he was with his uh, ex girlfriend Leah, and all I can remember is that okay, he was just really annoying, because he was like really close to Leah, and he's like, oh my god, baby, you okay? It's such touch her and stuff, and he's like, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, that I don't know. And that that was my first impression of Blavin, and it wasn't it wasn't too high. And then I met him later. Like, just uh, going over to his house, uh, the podcast and stuff. And he redeemed himself. He, I want, like, I accepted him as a person that I would let be my friend. Well, I remember when I first met Flavin was through our university's anime club. And then he kind of just started talking to me a lot. So the first thing I thought was, my goodness, this kid talks so much and I just met him. But then, I think he stalked me and found me on MSN afterwards or something. He stalked you? And then, somehow, I, I found out that, oh, well, he likes all the same things I do, and I started freaking out too. And then, after that, we've been friends ever since. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I, I have a... Uh, uh, he talked a lot, yeah. When I first met him, I think I was the first of all of us to meet him back in high school. My first day of high school, I met him. And uh, he seemed like a quiet kid, and uh, I looked at him, and... I kind of knew, yeah, okay. He's, he looks like a nerd, whatever. And uh, but when you t when I when I first talked to him, and he found out that I was also like interested in the same things, yeah, he talked a lot. He didn't shut up. <laughs> and it'd be like, you know, class is over, time to go home, but I'd still be there with him talking. It's like, don't you got a bus to catch? No, he keep going. And uh, <laughs> you know, since then he still talks a lot. He hasn't really changed. He he loves to talk. Talk is his favorite thing. He loves to gossip. But, uh, yeah, that's Blavin. I'd say he has a lot of hobbies. Like, he kind of jumps around every once in a while. He never keeps hobbies for long. No, no. Except for the main ones. Well, he'll keep them for a bit, and then he'll go to something else. But then he'll eventually go back to the older ones. Oh, okay. Like, magic. Yeah. Unless he's just been secretly keeping up with that without us knowing the whole time. But he's into a lot of comics, martial arts, I'd say. He has a variety of hobbies. I don't know. I don't know what to say about them. They're they're all different. I don't know. For me, it's like I've known him for that long, but. Uh, it seems like he jumps hobbies a lot, and when he does jump them, he goes like head first, deep end, into those hobbies. So it's like, I never knew he was into magic before, but when we started doing magic, he's like, you know what, I think I'm gonna get into the magic. The next day, he's like, yo, I read the whole Wikipedia article on magic, I understand all the rules, this new set's coming out, I've memorized all the mana costs and shit, it's so cool. And like, he just dives in head first. Like, the same thing with, um, like, his whole memory dealy. Like, he still does that once in a while. Yeah. But before, he was just like, oh, I got all these Darren Brown books. I got all these memory books. I got all these verbal linguistics books. I got yeah. all this. Like, I remember I would come over, and he's like, all right, 
he'd go to some website and then just randomize numbers. And then he'd look at it, and then he'd look away, and then he'd just start naming them, and I'd have to see if he was right. <laughs> yeah, it's like he, he, just, he likes to go crazy on hobbies, which is just cool, but his, his main hobbies of, of comics and, oh, less so games now, but he's still, still into those. Yeah, it's more about himself, I guess. It's more about macking on chicks. Yeah, he does that a lot. That was also a face. That was also a face. I wouldn't call it a face. <laughs> I think it's just his life. <laughs> his, his new lifestyle choice? Okay. Hmm. Raven's hobbies. How do I put it? They're like mist. Transient and ever changing. <laughs> that is quite the metaphor. <laughs> because it doesn't matter like what it is. If he takes an interest in it, then he goes straight into it and gets deep into it. And the period can last anywhere from two days to months to forever so far. Um, I remember a couple of instances, like for example, we showed him Soul Calibur 5 and then he started freaking out over Siegfried. I'm gonna learn his character and then I'm gonna master him and then you guys should learn your characters too and we'll all face each other. And literally two slash three days later, he got over Soul Calibur 5 already. <laughs> and on the opposite end of the spectrum, our, um, is this interesting magic cards like like we all thought that would be a passing sort of phase but yeah so far that stuck around for quite a yeah, while yeah I, I even had a bet with someone else to see how long he would stay on this one and uh, i lost that bet hard mm -hmm. would have never guessed yeah but blavin's hobbies are very yeah it's, they're the same as what you said they, they, they're very uh different and when he gets into it he really gets into it mm -hmm. like there's that point of uh no return where like spend too much of your money into you put too much investment into something and you can't pull out anymore because you're way too invested he'll go that far deep in and he'll still pull out <laughs> but uh no lately all his, his his other hobbies have been more about uh, i guess personal improvement right mm -hmm. and they're very extreme things sometimes it's like you said like fighting games and then the next he wants to i don't know play sports or something <laughs> Randomly, out yeah. of nowhere. And you can never tell, we're still guessing. He's yeah, you can never tell what he's actually into, so. Over the time I've known him, Blavin has actually changed a lot, because when I first met him, just hardcore nerdness all the time. But then, uh, if you listen to the podcast, he had a little revelation, I guess, of sorts. Just wanted all of a sudden to drop all his nerdy hobbies, get like low cut V necks, aviators. Yeah, that was a dark time. Cardigans, you know, all that stuff. He wants to have Abercrombie and Fitch, Hollister. Like he, he was just, I guess he was just un, like unhappy with himself for a while, and uh, he thought nerdiness was holding him back. And that was, those were dark times. <laughs> those are rough. They were. But Blaven seems to always be constantly changing since then like not only with hobbies but personality so just like his hobbies you can never tell when he's gonna when he's gonna all of a sudden he's ever like, changing you know what i hate avocados you know what? i fucking love avocados they're sick i love them so much you can never tell when like what part of him is gonna change and i guess well, maybe one day he'll you on edge. Yeah, maybe one day he'll settle down i don't know for as long as i've known blavin i remember in high school he would do some pretty random and stupid things like he bang his head along the lockers for no reason maybe to get attention I don't know what yeah and then I remember one day it was my birthday and we were in last period and he's like hey everybody it's this kid's birthday and he bangs his head on the desk as hard as he can yo Blavin was dumb in high school oh he is <laughs> he was he was he used to just say stupid stuff like I remember me, him, and Vince were hanging out after school one day, and we knew this one girl, and she had like big hair. Okay. And she was walking by us, and he actually pointed out, he like, he started a conversation with her. He's like, Did you ever notice that you have big hair? <laughs> <laughs> and what? Like, and then me and Vince start laughing, we're like, shaking our heads in disbelief that he actually did it. <laughs> She's just standing there all awkward with her friend, I guess, trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> 
Levin just keeps talking, trying to, you know, <laughs> save this conversation that he started. He ruined. Yeah. He's not like that anymore. Is he? Now he's... He's... He used to not talk to girls, I've noticed. But then, I guess after Australia... Something happened there. And a know. certain book that he read, things changed. I can't say I know Blavin that well because my image of him is always that he's a hyper child. Always running around and doing something different and full of energy and vigor for whatever he does. But he, he likes to do a lot of attention gathering stuff, which is very outlandish all the time. Um, I'm sure we know some examples, but <laughs> I, none come to mind right now. When I first met Blavin, he's very a timid person, very shy, very quiet. It's hard to believe from all our friends who know us now that he, at one point he actually would just sit at his desk and just keep to himself. But he used to be like that. But uh, eventually, when he gets to used to, you're comfortable. Yeah, he's like, he's like, it's like a locomotion. Like he just keeps going and he just doesn't stop. Yeah, he keeps going. Uh, I think though, as a symbol, he is the epitome of what can be. Uh, Achieved when you're a nerd and you want to rise up like Batman and uh, you want to be cool because he's definitely uh, that type of guy. I mean, uh, yeah, I think he gives hope to all of us in the world who are uh, ashamed to be what we are. does. He keeps things interesting and I'd say he usually knows things like if there's ever anything we're unsure of he'll somehow know about it and he'll bring it up. He's our personal fact checker. Yeah. He's he like he knows the the nitty pretty nitty nitty pretty pretty details. There you go. He's good like that. <laughs> Uh, I guess I would say that um, he contributes like the plans. Like whenever there's like a plan for a hangout like, for the podcast, it's always Blaven being like, "Yo, guy, come over to my house, let's do stuff." And it's like, it's never really specific. It's just come it's over. just like come over to my house and we'll figure something out. <laughs> sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but it's still we're hanging with a group of people rather than by ourselves at home. He and contributes a place to hang out. Yeah, his house is always a central hangout town. Uh, and then, I guess, for the podcast, he provides humor and embarrassment. Because that kid, as we said, he likes to talk. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I forget, I think he forgets that, like, we're recording to put on the internet for the world to hear. Uh, just like the was it last week's podcast or not last week's but uh, the one before where we we're gonna talk about D and D, then we had to switch it because of uh, some unfortunate accents. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he worries a lot. Yeah, he does. He does worry a lot. That's what I find. But uh, but it, it's funny because like when it's just us, it's like I can't believe you just said that. It's all good. But no one else heard it except for us, so it's good. Fine. Ravens has contributed unmistakable enthusiasm for everything he does and high level of energy um, amongst the things that he's tried to introduce to us I'd say the ones that have stuck so far are magic and Dungeons and Dragons and yeah a couple of big hitters there but no matter what he does it's just always fun 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 times with Laven pretty much yeah I think I'm going to have to echo what you've said. Uh, Blavin likes to do a lot of hobbies, but he also likes to do them with everybody else. So every hobby that he's gotten into, we always have to expect that we're going to have to have to experience it. Spot and, on, yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and at some point or another, uh, in terms of the podcast and again our social group, he always is never afraid to talk about the things that you normally not discuss oh, in, all the time. in a civil manner. <laughs> He likes to go deep into those topics, oh. if you know what I'm getting at. He he loves that type of discussion. He mm -hmm. lives for it, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, and believe me, if you're watching this right now, you know what we're talking about. Tame version is 
every an answer to anything would be like, I'd hit that or whatever. Yeah. Or, That's just like his favorite line. Yeah. <laughs> I'd hit that and whoever nods, yeah. Mm. Uh, for sure there's gonna be less D&D. &D. That's pretty much a given. I don't know if anybody else wants to DM. Oh, that's too much work. <laughs> I saw what he has to do. Uh, I guess it'll change for like, um, for outings. Like, we'll, maybe, maybe less laughs at certain person's expense. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's always at his expense, though. <laughs> yeah, it's all at his expense. Well, for me, personally, I guess I just lost someone to talk to about problems in life. Cause we, I don't know, sometimes we have these deep conversations and uh, he's always there to help out when I have problems. Don't know how this is going to work anymore that he's gone. Email. No, it's not, it's not the same. Because <laughs> then I have to wait for a reply. <laughs> yeah. So I guess... I'd say that's the biggest thing I'm going to miss. So, uh, I think now that he's gone, definitely the group is going to be quieter as a whole. Um, and we're going to lose a little bit of entertainment factor, because he's usually the one to do stupid and embarrassing things. But uh, there's, there's going to be an empty void there. Also, uh, there are certain things that, like, uh, that I could only talk about with him, like in terms of our hobbies and stuff. That, Like, for example, I could only talk about things with Anthony, because only we know about that stuff, or me and TJ because know about that stuff, or Christian. But now that Blavin's gone, I'm going to have to find a new person to to talk to on this. I need a new outlet, basically, and uh, he's gone. But, uh, I think as a whole, nothing's going to change. Because he didn't really add that much anyway. <laughs> Leave it to Vince. <sighs> well, it's a different story for me. Oh, no. I think Blavin's irreplaceable. <laughs> Well, I don't have anyone to talk to. I had I used to have deep talks with him. Right here. And <laughs> I won't have anyone to duel in with magic who know the way I think right off the bat. First move of the game or <laughs> I won't have anyone to sort of just, you know, shoot the time with and just spend all this time and like, sort of understand each other. I didn't realize you guys had this deep emotional connection. Like you look up into the clouds together, and there you are. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. He's one of my, he's one of my best friends. That's for sure. And I think I eagerly await the day that he comes back. Well, we only got 365 to go. Hopefully. <laughs> well, that's true. If he comes back, don't stay there too long. <laughs> He'll probably be more accepting of uh, certain types of Japanese culture, which he, uh, he likes to hide away in like a deep, dark cave somewhere for no one else to see. But uh, I think he'll join the ranks of me and mildly Vince and uh, start just, just accept Moe as a thing, you know? Like he's going to start loving k -On, he's going to buy sake, pil like hug pillows. It's gonna like just boot like mouse boot mouse pads out the wazoo. Like he got he'll have so many. He'll change them every day of the week, and uh, he'll probably find all of a uh, kiss play for Vince as a joke. But uh, he'll have read the series like front to back, and just like loved it. Wrote fanfic for it. It's probably what'll happen. What about you teach? Well, in a year, I, I'm gonna say he's gonna. He's gonna be the same Blavin. A little more Japanese. <laughs> I know for one, he will probably realize how much he really enjoys Western foods. So fish? <laughs> what? Instead of just fish? Oh yeah. Just fish all the time? Okay. No more of the sushi business. <laughs> he's gonna come home, he's gonna be back, and he's gonna be like, I need a fucking hamburger right now. <laughs> Probably will. I, I'm not gonna doubt that. It's probably the first thing we're gonna get him. A double down. Oh, you didn't get one before he left. <laughs> oh, we should go get one. After yeah, we should this. go get a double down. But anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, one year Blavin. That's a really exciting thought. 
After Australia, he picked up a couple of slang, such like, I reckon this, and cheers, and mate, and whatever. But after going to Japan, I think he'll adopt the physical mannerism, so he'll start bowing more often. <laughs> oh, hey guys! And then we'll be like, what are you doing? <laughs> or like, oh, sorry, sorry. Why are you apologizing? He didn't he, do anything He won't wrong. use a chair, he'll just kneel. Yeah, like on the ground, yeah. like this. And then we'll be like, uh, and I'll be like, I didn't even do that when I was there, so I don't know why you picked up. <laughs> Very exciting. Or he could pull off some reborn sort of stuff, like 10 years later, Blavin, but he'll cram it all into one year and be all exciting and have all this merchandise dangling around. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. I think the first thing that Blavin's gonna do is he's gonna get a Japanese haircut. Like, uh, well, like the dye and the gel. Everybody. He's gonna look like a Final Fantasy character. Like, yeah, he's gonna rock some sim some skinny jeans, zippers, and buckles everywhere. He's gonna look good. Um, I think that uh, he is going to yeah he's gonna miss Western food, but he's also going to embrace the Japanese culture. And he's gonna come back and he's gonna tell me that comics, first of all, suck, and second <laughs> that they don't need color because manga doesn't have color. And um, I'm gonna have to slap him in the face. He's also gonna throw away all his Gundams and just have anime girl figures. Does that sound right? 100 Yeah, because you know, he's gonna jump into that, like, straight in. He's gonna spend all his salary on that stuff, and, uh, he's going to be a full-fledged Japanese man. Proud of you. Proud of you, Blavin. I'm proud. Well, Blavin, I guess this is the end. Never gonna see you again. <laughs> so... All I gotta say is, have fun in Japan. Uh, don't beat any of those kids up. What? I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna. Oh, the the kids he's teaching. I'm just gonna beat kids up on the street. No. <laughs> he knows what I mean. Okay. Okay. Uh, don't forget to set your five alarm clocks, because right. I know you are a heavy sleeper. And uh, yeah. Best of luck. Yeah, man, uh, I guess try not to work too hard, even though you work six days a week, because Japanese school system's crazy. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you'll do it anyways, but, like, take it all you can. You're there for a year, or if you decide to stay, then you're there for longer, then, I don't know. Imagine he just decided, I'm going to live here. I'm just, I, I, I can't afford, uh, he can't afford a plane ticket back, so... <laughs> Because he just bought so much manga and memorabilia, so he just has to stay there for another year. Uh, That'll probably happen. Yeah, don't spend all your money, okay? <laughs> you said you wanted to go sc to back to school eventually, so don't spend it all on Gundams and get a Robo stuff. Yeah, have a good time. Um, last words, parting thoughts. Well, first of all, have fun. Um, don't do anything stupid. Don't have a relationship with your coworkers. It's not a good idea. Um, I, you know, just I, I really don't want to say. You're, you're probably gonna enjoy yourself, so just do that. Don't don't panic about anything. You you love to worry a lot, but just just stay calm. You'll be fine. You'll live. You'll get through it. Also, I set up that offshore account for our stuff, so just remember, I can email you all the details about it later. I left a little something extra for you. Uh, feel free to spend on whatever you want. Uh, I can't wait till you come back, but if you don't, then I'll leave that account open and we can set up our business, so, yeah.